gang of armed robbery is believed to be connected, and Phillips Petroleum Company talks about what may have been caused in that natural pipeline explosion near Beggs. We'll begin a special series tonight on Crime Stoppers and what Tulsans can do to help fight crime working with the police department. And Don Woods will have the, the weather and Chris Lincoln with the sports. That's next on Total Aid Tulsa. I'm Mike Hendricks, Executive Director of On the Bricks. On the Bricks is an ex-offender agency that assists the convicted felon in attempting to reintegrate themselves successfully back into the community. If you have questions concerning our program, please feel free to contact us at 583-3143 or 524 South Boulder. Thank you for your support. It's another great night at the Channel 8 Studios. Here comes Bob Howard, Totally Tulsa News Anchorman. And Beth Ringel, Totally Tulsa News Co-Anchor. There's sports director Chris Lincoln, always a hit with the fans. And Don Woods, meteorologist, makes an impression on everything he touches. What a cast! Howard, Ringel, Lincoln, and Woods, still the best show in town. Channel 8, number one, and you're part of it. Total 8 Tulsa, with Bob Hauer, Beth Rangel, Chris Lincoln, and Don Woods. The most complete up-to-the-minute news in the Southwest. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Authorities in LaFleur County are searching for three Bacoshi residents who disappeared early Sunday morning. 16-year-old Shelby Jean McFarland, 20-year-old brother Robert, and 17-year-old Johnny Porter. We're last seen about 4 a.m. Sunday en route from Loving to Bakoshi. An air search is still underway to find the trio. They were driving a 1975 blue Chevy pickup with a light blue camper on the back. We have a Total 8 film crew in LaFleur County. We'll have a complete report on that search on our news at 10. A Tulsa woman was robbed early this morning as she was leaving her apartment complex, and it appears that this is just one of many such crimes committed recently. We have two reports. First, from Dan Murphy on today's robbery. It started out as a routine day for Margie Elsey. She had just returned from a trip to London and was preparing to go back to her job. But when she left her apartment this morning, the pleasant thoughts of her trip were quickly erased. I was on my way to work, and this man stopped me with a gun and asked me for my purse, and I gave it to him. How much money did you lose? About $300. Did he apply any force at all, or the gun was all he the needed? The gun was all I needed. Police say this is only one in a series of such crimes, and it is believed that only one person is responsible for many of these incidents. Diane Kennedy has further details. This is Diane Kennedy reporting. Today's robbery makes the 17th armed robbery reported to police in the past 48 hours. Sergeant Larry Johnson says the suspect in the robbery has held up several women in the past few days. We have a a series of armed robberies being committed by a white male individual uh, described between 17 and 23 years old, about 5'9", uh, medium thin build, who's been accosting ladies uh, down in an area between south of 51st Street and uh, about clear down to 71st Street from about Riverside Drive to Harvard in that area. These ladies are coming out or going to their apartments and he's uh, uh, approaching them on the parking lot pulling a small revolver and uh, taking their purse and contents. Police are also investigating a series of convenience store robberies. Five stores were held up in only two hours early this morning. The stores were scattered around the city, but police believe all the robberies were committed by the same people. Police received three different descriptions of the robber, and they believe there are three people working together, two black males and a female. The bandits were armed with a sawed-off shotgun, a rifle, and a 45 automatic. At the last robbery around 4 this morning, a police officer saw the getaway car pulling away from a utotem store. He started chasing it but lost it at Garrison and Apache. A short time later, the car was found abandoned and somewhat damaged at Frankfurt and Xanthus. Inside, police found empty watch boxes taken from the utotem and an almost empty cash box. The car had been reported stolen yesterday. Police say the trio may be responsible for several other armed robberies. For Total A Tulsa, Diane Kennedy reporting.
Two convicts charged with the rape and attempted murder of two Ada women in Muskogee in late December were back in court this morning. Leonard Austin and Thomas Green had been paroled from Muskogee's pre-release center less than two months before the alleged assaults. Authorities believe they beat both women, raped one of them, and tied them with ropes and blankets. The women freed themselves and escaped near Shakota. Green and Austin will face charges in, of first-degree rape, kidnapping, and conspiracy in March. That 35-year-old woman who was raped, shot, and thrown over a cliff earlier this week in Tahlequah has given police a description of her attacker. Officers say they expect to have a composite sketch of the suspect soon. Coming up, Phillips Petroleum Company gives its own version of what caused a deadly gas explosion near Beggs. I'm Bill Mitchell. Crime Stoppers, who are they? Here in Albuquerque, they're anyone who has information about unsolved felonies. The program has had a dramatic effect on Albuquerque. It will start soon in Tulsa. We'll tell you all about it on Total A Tulsa News. And the Tulsa Philharmonic is being fined by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. I'm Christopher Lewis. Total 8 Tulsa is brought to you this evening by your friendly Otasco Home and Auto Stores, Leasers Discount Foods, the First National Bank of Fayetteville, Evans Furniture Revolution, and by Safeway. For over 30 years, people have been buying Poland chainsaws. Would you use anything but a Poland? Poland, Ed. Poland. And for over 30 years, they've been mispronouncing our name. Poland. Oh, a pool. A pool. So we'd like to remind you that when you want a tough, dependable chainsaw, there's only one name you need to remember. Poland. Get your Poland, a Poland chainsaw from Otasco. Hi, I'm I'm Larry, and and I I work for for Reesers Discount, Reesers Discount Foods, and and. Come on. <laughs> And my boss is a real nice guy, and we've got. You remember stores. six stores. So we've got, we've got. Come on, six. Six. We've got six stores. Don't be nervous. Go ahead. And Reesers is where you ought to be shopping to. Is that all I needed? This is Northwest Arkansas. They call it the land of opportunity. At First National Bank in Fayetteville, we're helping build a stronger Northwest Arkansas as we begin our 75th year of service to our friends and neighbors. You'll like the way we do banking at First National Bank of Fayetteville. We built this land together. We'll be proud to pass it on through our hills and through Remember our FDIC. Which lives within our Laboratory testing has shown that the gas pipeline which exploded near Beggs, killing two people, was sabotaged. Today, the Phillips Petroleum Company announced the establishment of a reward to find the persons responsible for intentionally damaging the pipeline, and Bill Mitchell has more on the story. The pipeline exploded on October 30th of last year. Seeping fumes from a six-inch natural gas pipeline exploded when a truck was driven into the area. Two Beggs women in the truck were killed instantly in that explosion and flash fire. Today at a press conference, Phillips Petroleum Company officials showed pictures of the intentionally damaged pipeline and announced the establishment of a $50,000 reward to find the person or persons who cut the pipe. They called the cut in the 1 8 thick inch pipe an intentionally induced gouge. The torch cut penetrated more than 80% of the pipe wall at its deepest point. The cut wasn't found in pipeline testing, because it is believed to have been masked over by some kind of tape. It is speculated the pipe was tampered with before it was buried five and one half feet below ground back in 1976. Phillips Company officials theorized someone was trying to embarrass their company or the construction company who put the pipe in. It is believed that whoever cut the pipe did not do so in order for it to rupture in 1978 and kill two people. Uh, Why, well, yes, I, I can say I, I don't think they did that because uh, this would... Uh, this job to cut through 80 percent of the thickness of the pipe without going through it to cause a leak immediately would really take uh, uh, well like a surgeon it just is that sensitive anyone with information about the sabotaging of the pipe can contact the phillips petroleum company in bartlesville the Mogi county sheriff's office or the oklahoma state bureau of investigation officials promise all information will be kept confidential 
For Total Aid Tulsa, Bill Mitchell reporting. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the people responsible for a November fire. Diane Kennedy has details. The $5,000 reward offer stems from a November 25th fire at the Mid-Continent Thermo King Company, a sales and service outlet for truck refrigeration equipment. The blaze apparently was set by burglars trying to cover their tracks. The burglars broke in through a back door, stole about $20,000 worth of parts, and then poured a flammable liquid through what used to be the parts room. Today, it's just an open area. The fire created such intense heat that it warped a steel fire door and steel beams on the ceiling. The roof was destroyed and had to be replaced. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment was also damaged. The company estimates the loss to be around $250,000. The remodeling is still not finished. Anyone wanting to furnish information concerning the fire should call the fire marshal's office at 581-5241. All information will be kept confidential. For Total A Tulsa, Diane Kennedy reporting. And in another fire today, two residents of a northeast Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City home escaped injury this morning when a fire swept through their home. The blaze caused more than $60,000 damage to the residents, as Bruce Kriegis reports. When firemen arrived at the John Soil residence, the house was burning out of control. Mr. Searle and his son Danny had been sleeping in bed, but awoke at the sound of a smoke detector and got out of the home safely. <laughs> Mrs. Searle arrived home moments later, and the frantic search began for animals still inside the house. Lisa! Yeah, Lisa! Yeah, Lisa! I got a fire in here. Can you get it out in here? It's running down the hall. Here, in the hall. here, it's right in there. Here, let me get in. I'll point no, it. No, you stay out. Go around there where you belong. As the fire burned out of control, firefighters stayed inside, searching for the animals. At least one dog was rescued in time. There's another one in there. Yeah. Fancy shepherd. It's a great big shepherd. She's thinking they have puppies. Okay, go to the left side and get the woman's clothes, please. Hey. Oh, I'm never gonna get them. Okay. There's the coat in there. I'd like to have a fur coat. What's the matter with you? Hey, ma'am. Hey, ma'am. Okay. What are you? Anything. Get out. Get out. Come on, get out! Get out, get out! It took only 30 minutes for the fire to spread to the rest of the house due to a lack of water. The nearest fire hydrant was a quarter mile away. Once the available water ran out, the home was left to burn. There was nothing else the firemen or the spears could do. Next, the County Commission receives an opinion poll on a new driller park. Right after this. Happy Endings, brought to you by Jell-O brand gelatin. Cheesecake! He said you were being the sales manager. He always says no to dessert. He says dessert fills you up and slows you down. Well, he won't say no to Jell-O gelatin. It looks good. You sure it isn't filling? Positive. Mm. Fabulous dessert. Thank you. Light yet so delicious. I see how you keep on your toes, Turner. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're the best. So for happy endings, don't say no, say Jell-O gelatin. You've always wanted a Maytag. And now, with this certificate, you get a $25 cash refund from Maytag when you buy this energy-efficient A308 washer. It can help cut your water bill because it uses less total water than any other top-loading washer with like capacity. Like all Maytags, it's built to be dependable. Buy now and save $25. Here's how. Now at Melton's Appliance Company, get this $25 Maytag cash refund certificate. If you're a part of the community being served by Claremore College, why not join hands with the Claremore College Foundation and become a part of a bright future? The foundation is presently involved in Quest for Quality 79, a program designed to hone the edge at Claremore College a program leading to a three-way bond between the college, the foundation, and you. 
Yes, you'll be able to see and feel the results of your contributions when you decide to make Claremore College the college of your choice for support. A $3 million bond issue for a new all-purpose stadium at the Tulsa Fairgrounds was proposed today by County Commissioner Lewis Harris. Harris said the Fairground Trust Authority has paid for an $8,000 survey of the community to determine voter sentiment on the bond issue. Results of that survey will be available in two weeks, and if favorable, Lewis expects a proposal to build an 8 to 12,000 seat stadium to go to the voters in May. Passage of such a bond issue will require 60% majority of the votes cast. Well, what's on Spotlight tonight, Chris? Well, Thursday's usually our day to check in on the fishing. <laughs> hey, Don Butler uh, put it pretty clean. You have, you have to be a little off-center to be out there fishing in this weather, unless you find a heated dock. But, uh, but he yeah, was. Uh, yeah, Don was out fishing. <laughs> so we'll have a report with Don and uh, a few features uh, anglers ought to know about coming up. All right. Oh, oh I'm ready, ready to go right now. <laughs> Thursday's our day to Spotlight and check in on the fishing editions in green country. We had to ask our fishing pro, Don Butler, if he had any cure for cabin fever. That's now reaching epidemic proportions here in green country. Well, fishing fever and cabin fever are synonymous, and the only thing that will cure either of them right now is fishing. Uh, you can get some relief by talking fishing, and that's what we intend to do at the uh, tackle show starting the 15th through the 18th. We've got a, uh, an all-star lineup of fishing pros that will come in. I think we've... We probably uh, uh, lent it more this year towards instructional uh, than we have just sitting and listen to somebody else have tell about how many fish they catch. So we've got a lot of instruction and be a lot to be learned there. The only fishing that we have in the area right now is just heated docks. I haven't even talked with any of the guys who have fished below the lock and dam for walleye. I feel like probably there's there's some fishing going on there, but the cold's just been so bitter. Anybody would have been uh, a little bit uh, off level if they have gone out and tried it. So. The docks are about the same right now. Lee Henry says that he doesn't have many people in his docks and they're not catching too many fish. I, of course, that always happens when you don't have many fish, then there, of course there's not many fish being caught, but uh, it won't be long now that we'll have everybody trying it. Don, the Bass Unlimited Dinner is something people ought to put on their calendar. March the 13th, and we're, we've got a good worthwhile project this year for, uh, where the money will be spent. We're gonna extend the uh, link limit studies that we had last year, so we'd like to invite everybody out for that time period. We always have a good time, so remember March the 13th. The Hurricane has a big Valley game with Drake here tonight. We'll see highlights of some big basketball victories last night for ORU and OSU. Rhythmatic gymnast Holly Eidelman shows off her talents of this beautiful sport. John Cobb displays his expensive toys that men go racing with. These stories, along with our weekly snow ski report, a slow motion look at the city's outstanding diving champion coming up all that in sports. Beth? Thank you. A call for women to continue their efforts in business and politics was the topic of a seminar today, and George Stewart was there and has this report. It's called... Well, over 300 women gathered here today in a seminar to discuss the changing roles of women. And if there was any common theme that seemed to be developed, perhaps it would be, we've come a long way, baby, but don't stop now. A distinguished panel of women shared their insights into everything from banking and continuing education to crime prevention and women as travelers. Norma Eagleton appeared as her job as Revenue and Finance Commissioner ends and her new job as a State Corporation Commissioner begins. Also present was Mrs. Molly Boren. It was her first trip back to Oklahoma since her husband was sworn in as a United States Senator, and she was glad to be back. It feels very good indeed. As a matter of fact, if there hadn't been snow on the ground yesterday, when I stepped off the plane, I would have stooped down and kissed the ground. <laughs> Mrs. Boren is a lawyer and former judge, and she has something to say about being the spouse of an elected official. I also did a little bit of research in the Library of Congress about the, uh, the very strict protocol that was once required of congressional and senate wives. And I, I found it very interesting. I thought the audience might find it interesting as well. There's been quite a change over the last 20 to 30 years in that regard. Are uh, Washington women in that sense then more, uh, what would the word be, liberated now in terms of uh, well, protocol? In, in that, oh yes, oh yes indeed. And also, you find more working wives among the senators and, and congressmen. There are several lawyers. There are women involved in real estate businesses. And I think in that regard, it's, it's changed a great deal, too. About her own career in law, Mrs. Boren says she might practice while in Washington, but not immediately. For Total Aid Tulsa, George Stewart reporting. Next, we'll have a special report. On Tulsans fighting crime with the police right after this. Reach out, Laura. 
Thank you, Tommy. Join the team to help Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers raise money for Easter Seals. Stop by at any Wendy's and pick up an entry form entitling you to half-price bowling. For every pin that you knock down, money will go to your local Easter Seal chapter. And you can win great prizes, too. For details, stop by Wendy's today. Let's, Let's all bowl for, for Easter Seals. Seals. Darling, I love you so. Pickwick Records gives you the sounds of yesterday, today and tomorrow. Featuring such major artists as Elvis Presley, Dolly Parton, Stevie Wonder, Linda Ronstadt, and Bing Crosby. Plus the music from the fantastic movie, Grease. You can buy these selections and many, many more at the incredibly low price of $2.69. Look for this special display at your nearby Safeway stores. Kraft announces light and lively processed cheese product in slices and a loaf. Help yourself. Half the fat of regular American processed cheese and lower calories for all your favorite recipes. Try light and lively. The difference is that you help yourself to flavor with half the fat and America spells cheese. K R A L T. A pickup truck train collision just north of Wolitka today has left one person dead. With that story, John Hassler. The accident occurred at 11.55 this morning at a railroad crossing three miles north of Wolitka on a country road. According to an Oklahoma highway patrolman, a farmer, apparently out feeding cattle, decided not to stop at the crossing because of snow and ice on the road. The engineer of the Missouri-Kansas-Texas train said the locomotive was traveling approximately 40 miles per hour when the pickup attempted to cross the tracks. The truck was dragged for almost 500 feet before the train could stop. No one on the train was injured. Damage to the engine was estimated at $2,000. The name of the victim is being withheld pending notification of relatives. For Total 8 Tulsa, north of Wilika, John Hassler reporting. Former Tulsa Police and Fire Commissioner Mike Kirpan, who earlier this... The VA in South Tulsa will be closing its doors in June. Financial problems are the cause of that closure, as Christopher Lewis reports. For the past 50 years, the Vianney School for Girls has stood as a landmark here in South Tulsa, but come June, it will be closed. Federal regulations, if the school were to remain open, would be too restrictive to make the school pay for itself. Basically, we're closing the school because we do not have enough sisters to cover all of our programs across the United States, and we do have to feel which are the most effective, where we can do the most good. And in Tulsa at the present time, our numbers are low. We don't see in the future that they will increase, and part of the problem is the uh, LEAA guidelines and the future of possibly Oklahoma taking on the funds that uh, would put these guidelines into effect here. When do you think that the school will close? Uh, it will phase out at the end of May and will probably leave by June. What happens? Where do you go? And then what happens to this beautiful building? Well, we will just go to one of the ten cities that we do serve, one of the ten major cities, and the buildings here we are negotiating with the diocese regarding them. What about the girls? Twenty girls here, their futures are at stake. Where do they go? Well, we have geared their programs, each one of them, so we feel that for most of them, they will be ready to either return to their families or to whatever program they, we had lined up for them by the end of May. For any that will not be ready or do not feel that they want to uh, go back home at that time, we have other alternative plans. So they won't suffer from the same? Well, they're suffering inside because they will miss us. And we, we are more than just a placement. We, we are a relationship that lasts through many years. You're going to be sorry to see this go? Yes, very, very. So by June, the Vianney School for Girls will be one for the history books. For Total 8 Tulsa, Christopher Lewis reported. A fire left an Oakhurst family homeless. The fire began last night and reignited early in the morning. When a Total 8 Tulsa film crew answered a fire alarm in North Tulsa today, they got more than they bargained for. What started out as a routine floor furnace fire in a home turned into a first-rate rescue. Christopher Lewis has the story. It was early afternoon when Tulsa fire units responded to a house blaze in the 2600 block of East Oklahoma in North Tulsa. A small wood frame home was burning. Firemen said a malfunctioning floor furnace was to blame. A routine assignment for city firemen, routine especially at this time of year. Fortunately, there was nobody at home when the blaze broke out. Nobody except three family pets, two cats and a small dog. 
When firemen finally noticed that the animals were trapped inside the burning home, a routine assignment turned into a rescue. Well, of course, normally we're, we've sent fellows in there with, with masks on. They're looking for people, and uh, they found both these animals there in the kitchen. So I just pumped them a little bit, and there's nothing we can do for the cat. So you just of course, there was no one in there. We knew that before we started to work on them. Yeah. So you just hope that the dog will pull through now, and he'll be all. He doesn't look like he was burned at all. He's no, uh, he alert. was just overcome by, by smoke. It was pretty thick. And it's uh, kind of sad to see him struggling like this, but he, there is a chance that he'll make it. Huh? Seems to be, yeah. Uh, see, he can touch, touch his eyes and he blinks, so he's yeah, got he's good reaction. Uh -huh. so. What can people do? Keep their dogs and cats from it's not, not too much. Not much when they're when they're shut up in the house like that, you know. To help a bit, firemen brought in oxygen. The dog's heart had stopped beating because he couldn't get air inside the home. But once he was outside, he started regaining consciousness. By the time firemen were packing up, the nameless puppy was regaining more strength on his way back to recovery thanks to the quick thinking of a Tulsa fire chief who really cared. For Total 8 Tulsa, Christopher Lewis reporting. We're happy to report that dog is doing fine, his tail is still wagging. Well, today was Norma Eagleton's last day. Well, today's Groundhog Day. Much has been said about that little weather forecasting creature, but perhaps nothing quite so poetic as this by reporter Christopher Lewis and photographer Paul Reyes. <laughs> to the lonely groundhog, nature's little weatherman. He makes but one forecast a year on that we can depend. By looking for his shadow early in the day, he judges the length of our winter, how long the bad weather will stay. But can his predictions be trusted, or is it just a myth? How does he know if winter will be here? Some say it's just a wish. In a way, yes, uh, Chris. Uh, theory has it that uh, February is just about the beginning of their mating season. So whenever they come out of their home, maybe they're looking for a mate. So if they see the shadow, what does that mean? Maybe they think they've seen a mate? Probably. Now, if this here groundhog legend is true, and uh, Jill here looks up and doesn't see her shadow, that means that we're going to have a short winter. Well, today there was no shadow, and uh, Jill says that we have no winter here. Jill, come on back, Jill. Hey, Jill, come on, come on. For Total Aid Tulsa, Christopher Lewis and Jill reporting. Good little groundhog. Actually, it's a prairie dog, but nobody knows the difference. You may get some cold. Huh. Groundhogs do. Yeah. No, I guess they're, <laughs> how about the weather, Don? Well, it's, they're just as bad in Oklahoma City. They use the grizzly bear. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> well, it looks like it's gonna be a weekend without snow, and it's about time. We do have cold weather moving in, but that's going to be about the extent of it. There is cloudiness on the satellite picture front to the west. Uh, on this picture has all... The rest range from foggy to partly cloudy. According to Ben Barker of the National Weather Service at Tulsa's International Airport, if you are one of a handful of people who really love January's record-setting winter weather, then you'll probably love the weather in February. It could be that way. I'm sorry to say that, Bill, but that, that could be true. What do we expect? The extended forecast right now for the month of February calls for below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. And when you add those two together in the wintertime, it means a wet, snowy month probably with cool temperatures. Despite those expert predictions, many people are still looking forward to Groundhog Day for the final word on more winter. If the groundhog sees his shadow, we, according to legend, should get six more weeks of winter. If he does not, spring is just around the corner. Many Teltons who have repeated the phrase, I hate snow, are hoping tomorrow will be a cloudy day. For Total Aid Tulsa, Bill Mitchell reporting. Well, along with that record, Oklahoma Natural Gas Company customers set a record for usage of natural gas in January using an estimated 45.3 billion cubic feet of gas. The previous record was 42.1 billion cubic feet of, of gas in January of 1978. 
Don, what do you think about that? Are our bills going to be as high this month as last month? That's a real guess. <laughs> <laughs> also, we will have sunshine tomorrow. I hate to say it, but we're going to... Don't hate to say it. Well, Sounds that good. means six more weeks of winter, though, because oh, oh, that's okay. when we interview Grundoon the Groundhog. That's right. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. February's forecast to be cold and wet, and Grundoon's going to see shadow. Anyway... Uh, we've had a very severe January, but of course, if you like picture postcards, it's been a beautiful January. Here's uh, some beautiful snow scenes around the city of Tulsa, and uh, sometime next July, we'll look back on this and say, wasn't it beautiful after we'd forgotten about slipping around all month? Here's a high-pressure cell. Uh, last uh, uh, 7 o'clock this morning, since that time, the uh, high has moved eastward into Tennessee, and the winds have continued to pump warm air in from the south into Oklahoma. There you can see a front west of us. It's still out there, and it's moving in this direction. But in the meantime, we're getting much warmer weather into the state, and it's about time, because last night we dropped to seven below zero and broke a record here in Tulsa, and that was nothing. Topeka, Kansas would have loved seven below. They got to 23 below zero and broke a century record a 100-year record at Topeka with their 23 below zero. The low pressure center that began in California has moved to northeastern Colorado, but that low caused a lot of trouble out in California when it was there. They, uh, 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 it was right down in the Palm Springs area in the mountains of California, and here Royal Kennedy is reporting on a tremendous snow that is very unusual. By yesterday morning, the mountain areas northeast of the city had up to two feet making roads impassable. Hundreds of motorists and truck drivers had to abandon their vehicles on Interstate 5, the main route between northern and southern California. The few snow plows available attempted to clear the highways, but the going was slow. Just like Oklahoma. Boy, Southern California. That's very, very unusual for them. The low has now moved to northeastern Colorado, and heavy snow warnings out are, are out from northern Colorado through the Rocky Mountains down into northern New Mexico. Seven inches of snow has already fallen in southern Colorado, and uh, we get reports from the skiers that if you're going skiing, take warm gear. It is bitterly cold out there. You need a face mask. The temperatures are so very cold that it's uh, uh, uncomfortable skiing and normal ski uh, equipment. Better take a face mask and really bundle up if you're going out. We have double fronts moving across. This front is moving across from the west and Arctic air coming down from the north. Extremely cold weather is going to move back into Oklahoma. On Sunday, temperatures dropping into the teens for a high pressure or high temperature. And we do expect some flurries in Oklahoma, but not heavy snow. We're grateful for that. In the state of Oklahoma, temperatures are much better today. 37 at Ardmore is the warmest, 34 at uh, McAllister, 31 at Muskogee, Fort Smith, and Fayetteville, 29 at Joplin, 30, 23 at Chinook, 29 at Bartlesville and Tulsa, 35 at Oklahoma City, and 29 at Ponca City. The high in Tulsa, 29. The present temperature after an early morning low of an unbelievable 7 below zero. That's cold. Air pollution index, 51. The pollen count, 2. The flying weather in the morning, VFR. So it looks uh, like we're going to have sunshine in the morning. A look at the radar now shows nothing on the radar. We don't expect anything either for a while. Kimmy Pitts of Claremore gets tonight's Gusty, and Gusty is uh, uh, trying to thaw out the thermometer. He says this is just too much, so here he is with a match, and you can see that he's holding it under the thermometer. The mercury is way down there, and it's so cold, he's having to hold a match under the thermometer to drive the temperature up. It's just a little bit too much. Anyway, right now it is clear. The temperature up to 29, the humidity 55%, the wind south 12, the pressure 3011 and steady, and we've had no precipitation today or this month, and normal is 172 for the month of February. Sunrise 724, sunset at 551. Don't forget, tomorrow's Groundhog Day, partly cloudy, not as cold tonight, southeast winds 8 to 16, 16 for low. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, just a chance of flurries. Northeast winds 8 to 18, 35. Cooler air is beginning to drain in. Friday night, still a chance of flurries, 16 degrees. And then Saturday, a chance of flurries and 22 degrees. Sunday, colder with snow possible. If we're going to get any kind of snow at all, it'll be on Sunday. And we're not really sure about Sunday because we don't know what that uh, low pressure center is going to do right now. 16 degrees for a high on Sunday. Monday, bitterly cold again. Partly sunny and cold, 16 degrees for a high. 
That's very, very cold weather. So let's have a look at the weather wisdom and uh, see what the moon has to say. Yeah, you're going to be able to see the moon because it's clear. And there is a poem uh, that tells about the moon. Pale moon doth rain, red moon doth blow, white, rain, white moon doth neither rain nor snow. And that's uh, partially true because a pale moon means clouds are over the moon, a red me moon means wind and dust in the air, and a white moon means it's clear and calm and nice weather. It does? It does. <laughs> it does. This goes way uh -huh. back to early Elizabethan Very early. Oh, great. Next, an Oklahoma delegation goes to Washington. To see President Carter, so stay with us. Walmart's Super Inflation Buster Sale is your do-it-yourself center for big discount savings. Get the most out of every gallon of gas with these Autolite spark plugs. Regular plugs, just 48 cents each. Resistor plugs, only 68 cents each. And Walmart dual oil filters are discount priced at just $1.63 each. Shop Walmart's Super Inflation Buster Sale now through Saturday. Come to Walmart. Savings you can see. Everything you love. The world of antiques is a world of the beautiful, the unusual, the nostalgic, the precious, the useful, the dramatic, the priceless, even the humorous. Come roam the world of antiques during the very special Worldwide Antiques Show. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Assembly Center Exhibit Hall, open 1 to 10, closing 6 p.m. Sunday. Admission $1.75, good all three days. Check newspaper for discount coupon. Saturday night at 11.30, The Graduate. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman stars as The Graduate, Saturday night at 11.30. Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping uh, was in Atlanta today where he had lunch with 1,400 businessmen. We have a report from Al Dale. Sunny skies, but a brisk cold wind marked Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping's first visit to the American South. He and his entourage landed at Dobbins Air Force Base outside Atlanta. The air base welcoming ceremony was simple and short. The group, escorted by police cars, then drove in a motorcade to a downtown Atlanta hotel. It was here, across the street from the hotel, that protesters first made known their loud but basically orderly opposition to the visit. Their signs accused the China leader of helping to murder 60 million people and charged the U.S. with selling out Taiwan. One of the leaders of the protesters was right-wing Georgia Congressman Larry McDonald, a member of the John Birch Society. If we are going to welcome to Atlanta uh, this type of individual and honor him as a great guest, and then we may as well make Adolf Hitler's uh, birthday a national holiday by comparison. Inside, things were much quieter. Compliments flowed with the sweetness of Georgia peaches as hosts and guests praised each other's hospitality and accomplishments. In remarks closing the luncheon, Dung praised President Carter and made a thinly veiled reference to the Soviet Union as he criticized so-called warmongers. The vice premier is vitally interested in upgrading the industry of China. To that end, he wanted to get a close look at an automobile assembly plant. That was placed on the agenda for late this afternoon. Then tonight, dinner with the governor. Al Dale, ABC News, Atlanta. Well, as usual, President Carter had a busy day. Governor George Nye and some state legislative leaders met with the president and Mrs. Carter today in Washington. Nye and state Senate President Pro Tem Gene Howard and state House Speaker Dan Draper discussed the Equal Rights Amendment and other topics. The president and his wife ordered to, uh, offered, I should say, to help obtain ratification of the ERA in Oklahoma. The officials received invitations to the White House after Draper and Howard introduced resolutions calling for the ratification of the ERA. Since 1970, Oklahoma's population has grown by 12.5 percent, well above the national average of 7.3 percent. The increasing popularity of the Southwest brings both prestige and problems to Oklahoma and to Tulsa. For more on that, here's Mary Rose. Since 1970, Oklahoma's population has grown by 320,000 people.
Now that may not seem important, but when you consider that's equal to the population growth of the previous 20 years, it is a lot of people. In fact, Oklahoma now ranks 17th among all the states in terms of population growth, making it one of the fastest growing states in the nation. Abundant energy, low unemployment, a relatively mild climate, and low taxes all combine to attract people to our state, causing officials to speculate that Oklahoma's population will exceed 3 million in 1981. But these population totals don't fully reflect the extent of change within our state. Historically, Oklahoma has been a rural state with heavy concentrations of people in agricultural areas. Today, more than half the state's population is concentrated in the Oklahoma City and Tulsa metropolitan areas. Oklahoma City, the fastest growing city in the state, now boasts a population of 768,000 people. Tulsa, on the other hand, is not far behind. More than 610,000 people live in the Tulsa metropolitan area. While population within Tulsa's city limits increased by about 10,000 people during the last seven years, bedroom communities experienced an astounding